Hi everyone, welcome back to Retro Tech. I'm Steve. Today we're looking at a brand new piece of old technology. Uh, first off, I want to thank anybody who voted, especially on Patreon and YouTube, for what to see in today's video. Uh, the choices were either this Sharp Linitron 13 inch color CRT TV behind me, or the winning item, which is the Sony SVO2000. VHS player and this is actually a SVHS player so I think that stands for Super VHS which was trying to make a higher-end VHS tape uh, at the end of the life of the VHS tape altogether so um, again this is the best VCR I've ever come into possession of and I thought it deserved some attention a closer look uh, let's talk a little bit about the features and can this really make VHS tapes look good in today's world all right so here's our first look at this close up again the sony stereo video cassette recorder svo 2000 now the first thing to notice is the immense size of this vcr it's um, quite large long it weighs about uh, 16 pounds according to the manual all right, here we have a closer look at the front of the VCR. Obviously, we've got a nice power button. Uh, we've got an infrared bar here, which means this does have a remote. My unit did not come with the remote control. At the end of the video, I'll do a roundup and I'll tell you how I got this unit because it's kind of an interesting story. As I said, it's just massive, so I came down here to show you the other side. There's no buttons or anything on this side. Um, the only button is the power button until you flip down the front and reveal the full power of this VCR. Okay, so we definitely have a lot of controls for this VCR. They are just hidden by this really high-end magnetic door. Let's back up a little bit and take a closer look at what we've got here. A lot of these are gonna be uh, pretty self-explanatory. We've got an eject button, an input select button, some editing stuff that's allowed. And um, some of these things obviously are gonna have to do with analog video or analog cable input antenna input which is not relevant in our area anymore since everything's digital now you can naturally record on this vcr i'll go through some of the features more in depth but just to get a nice look at how uh, high quality all these buttons are they are very nice and um, then you've got this incredible uh, fast forward wheel over here which i'll show a little bit closer in detail uh, when we have the vcr hooked up for a demo and this is a great feature when you're trying to search through a videotape and find something, or if you just want to quick, quickly rewind a uh, section of tape to get to a scene really quickly. This is just an unbelievable tool. We've gotten closer to the buttons here, and I want to show this side first. And uh, first off, we've got a, select a couple selectors here. Um, that are really nice. We've got an SVHS mode. You can put on the auto repeat and it'll when it's over it will high speed rewind the tape and just automatically keep playing it over and over again until it's told not to. This is the other side of the front of the VCR. We've got some interesting controls here. Um, we've got some inputs for our line 2 on the front here which is an S video in and then we've got stereo audio in and then of course composite. Um, you've also got some controls here for if you're recording a tape and you want to uh, change the stereo audio levels. You can decrease the left or increase the left and right, etc. I've also got a sharpness control here, which will help your picture either go softer or sharper, depending on how it looks and how you want it to look. And there's some other things that we'll need to talk about more in depth and try to figure out if there's anything on this um, control right here. I believe this should be a volume knob perhaps for the phone. So you've got an option to add stereo headphones in there and then you can control that with the knob right there. Uh, we've got some other things. Now this is interesting. It's got an inhibit button and what this inhibit button will actually do um, is if you want to set this thing up where it's just displaying a videotape and you want to leave it and then not mess with it and not have anybody else to come in and make any changes and it'll just keep playing you can in activate one of these inhibit modes so you can turn it on where it says off remote or key and remote and all that does is um, if it's turned off it's not inhibiting it in any way 
If you have it on one of the other things, it will not allow, for example, the remote to be used. It will not accept any remote signal if that's turned on remote. If it's on key and remote, you can't do anything at all to it. You won't be able to come over here if you accidentally hit a button. It will not stop the VCR from doing whatever it is doing. So you can set it to do something. You could set it to record. And even if somebody comes and hits a button, you will not, it will not affect the uh, VCR at all, which is kind of a cool feature. Lastly, we have a backlight control, which just controls the backlight of this screen right here. When I have it powered on, you'll see some things on this display that I'll go through a little bit more in detail soon. Okay, first off, let's take a look at one of the sides closer. This is our power in. It uses a standard power cable, which is nice. So if you don't have a power cable for it, you don't really need one. You can get one easily. We've also got our other line ends. So this thing has the ability to uh, take in one, two, there's a couple of line one, three, and then uh, this is a line out for S-Video. So you've got a couple lines ends for S-Video and two line outs for S-Video on this side. So here's the other side and all the controls opposite of the last one. And we've got just our standard VHF, UHF in and out, our RF unit, whether we want it to have on um, channel two or, cha or I'm sorry, channel three or channel four. There is a cable box control spot here where if you have a certain type of cable box from that time period and a cable, you could hook that into the cable box and have some functionality between the two. Uh, this control S uh, is, I believe this is like a proprietary uh, thing that Sony did where you could have a lot of um, devices from their time and put them in sequence, have them going in and out, and that way you could use one controller to control many units and have them do different things. Obviously, we've got some uh, line ins here and line outs again. And this is composite video, and these are BNC connectors for the back of this. So you can tell this is meant more for commercial. The last thing I want to notice back here, this is a five pin control thing. Again, you can uh, build some kind of cable. There was this proprietary Sony cable that went with this that would uh, have control units and other things plug into there. There's a small uh, emblem here I want to zoom in in. The very last thing I want to show on the back of here is this little emblem that says, Faroja, I think is how you say it, laboratories. Uh, this was a really high-end, apparently, uh, laboratory back in the day. And I read documentation dating back to the mid-90s of professionals talking about reviews on this equipment. And they said that um, this laboratory was really highly well-known for producing something that had really superior video quality. So that didn't surprise me that Sony would use that and have um, more of a superior video quality on this VCR. So one of the first things I wanted to mention is you do have this nice window for when your uh, player is closed. Then once you open it up you can see that there's more stuff on the sides that was blocked originally where you can see what is um, going on. So. No, you just got it, some interesting things here. Tuner channel two, so it's just on channel two, but you can change that by that. I got auto tracking set, so this does have an auto tracker, but it's very nice. Uh, we've also got, like I said, our tape display here. And when I fast forward and stop, or rewind and stop, you can see the tape heads on that display moving. It's actually showing me what the tape inside is doing. If I press play it'll slowly start to show you that tape speed playing. And then left and right over here is our audio indicator, how that audio is coming out of our VCR. All right, so here is the demo start. Now, you can tell we've got two broadcast monitors, PVMs, 14 inch, uh, hooked up in loop to this VCR. I'll show you around back now what I've got set up for our first demo. Here's behind, and for the first demo, I want you to see we're using just BNC cables. Line 1 and line 2 simultaneously are going to two different monitors. I'm not using the output of the monitors, so you can see that it's definitely powerful enough to drive two TVs independently. Today's demo is featuring a, one of the most famous films of all time especially one that people do like to watch on VHS because it's one of the original versions or one of the ways you can still see one of the original versions of this movie. 
And I just want to show you some of the features as you know how simple it is to use them first, but you can really see very little. The difference on the outputs there is more about the settings on the TVs. You'll notice the one on the right is slightly brighter. So that's just something to note. That's only because of the brightness setting on the TV. I can tune that up here in a minute. But just so you can see a lot of these features, again, I love this little wheel here that you turn left or right and you can rewind or um, go forward. This does have a very high-end integrated comb filter that's going to be showing uh, or, you know, filtering out a lot of the noise that comes through on these. Okay, let's take this demo one step farther. I've got things set up back here. I want you to see, you know, I've got the two BNC composite lines out as well as the two S video lines out. And as you can see over here, I've got four monitors set up. The two have the composite outs going into them and the two of the S-Video outs going into them. So let's go around to the front of the screen and see how it looks. Okay, so you can see here all four monitors are playing. Now please note that the two top monitors do have some issues with colors, especially the top one. Uh, well, actually both of them do. So the one on the top left is only showing black and white currently. The one on the right is showing color, but it's missing a color gun, so it looks a little bit different than the two on the bottom that are correct. But all in all, you can see we've got a picture on all four screens with their own cords, and this VCR seems to do a great job of putting pictures out into all of them. Okay. And what we're, I have it on S video out right now, so the most important question might be does it look any better between S video and composite? And a PVM or BVM will be great for testing this because you can switch simultaneously between the two inputs. Now I want you to notice I am freely switching between the composite input. The only thing you notice is the NTSC popping up here. I'm switching but there I switched off of it but composite and S video and I'll be honest with you I don't see one single bit of difference on picture quality or the look of it or anything. So I just don't feel like if you're wanting to know if S video is going to make it look better, it's not the S video that's making it look better. It's got to be the way the VCR is working that would make it look better because again that input just does not seem to change or look any different, not even the brightness or any bit of it when I change it because you I mean if you can see anything or notice anything on that camera, like right now I'll switch it back and forth. I see a little bit of a brightness on one of the inputs now. When I do that quicker and I look really closely, I will admit it is t a tiny bit sharper. Uh, but I don't know that that is anything better. Um, I mean, it's slightly better. So I take back what I said. I mean, it is a tiny minuscule amount, but nothing like when you go from composite to say S video on a gaming console. It's not a jump that you should be uh, concerned or you know excited about. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on this VCR? I gotta say, I've owned quite a few VCRs and this one has by far been my favorite. The functionality to be able to output to multiple TVs is amazing. You could practically put this VCR anywhere you wanted, and as long as your cables are long enough, stretch them anywhere to reach any number of, in, I mean, up to four outputs just from itself, and um, it would uh, work perfectly nearly for, you know, any kind of feet setup like that. The other thing is um, I have recorded videos on it. It does a great job, a fantastic job, recording movies. You get... Uh, the chance this I've read through the manual on this and you have uh, the functionality to record very high quality on shorter tapes or this does have the capabilities of recording a nine hour session on a tape in one spot if you have the correct tape and you have it set on the correct settings on the VCR so you could seriously sit there and have it record nine hours of whatever you wanted uh, if you have the correct tape and it will just go on recording. A lot of the other features are great as far as playback ability. It looks really cool. It's heavy duty. Uh, it is expensive and they are becoming rare to get. I'll kind of tell you while we watch a little bit more action. 
about how I got this one. This one came with the PVM on the left. So the white bezeled PVM was originally on an ultrasound machine and attached to that ultrasound machine was the VCR. Uh, so when I went and salvaged the whole setup, I, I grabbed the VCR too because it was just something I'd been looking for for a long time and um, it really met a need for me. So that's how I acquired it. Now. If you want to get one of these today, the easiest way is obviously eBay, but they do come at a premium price uh, since they're not going to be uh, you know, readily available. So I'm sorry about the focusing because the shutter is trying to catch uh, R2-D2 there and uh, it might get a little blurry. So if it gets on your nerves, just try to listen and not watch it. Uh, I... Final thoughts, I do feel like if you're looking for a VCR, this one will meet all your needs and it's high end. Uh, it'll hold its value if you take good care of it. It does have an automatic head cleaner, so you don't have to worry about internally getting in there and cleaning it up too often. Uh, what we will do in a future episode is I will open it up, show some of the internal hardware, kind of give some more advanced features I may have found about recording and some of the other stuff, but overall, you can kind of see that if you just want a VCR that's going to show something high quality, uh, you could use it for that. But I also feel like there's a lot of other features you could use on this if you wanted to do more than just watch VHS tapes. Maybe if you wanted to record something, uh, dub something from uh, any any real input or output that you could put. You could put even uh, composite from a video capture card into this and for some reason capture it onto a VHS tape, tape if you wanted to. So please let me know if you have any questions or comments and let me know what you think of this video. If you'd like to see more demos and features like this, please uh, leave it in the comments. Thank you again to all the Patreons who have decided to jump on board and support Retro Tech. I couldn't do any of this without you. Thanks again and have a great day.